Maybe someone up there was wondering what it's like here. I guess. Do you think we'll ever meet them? I hope so. Don't you? Do you think we'll ever meet them? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, good night, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> wherever, wherever time it is for you guys. Um, meme team back here again for my third ranking video. This time I want to do something that was near and dear to my heart, which is the Halo franchise. I'm going to be ranking every single Halo game that I've played except for I think Fireteam Raven it's called, which is you need to have an arcade machine, which I don't have, but I know what goes on in it, but I, I don't think it's fair for me to rank it, because I've never actually, you know played it myself but we're gonna be ranking not just the campaign but we're going to be ranking the multiplayer as well it's a two and one so i'm gonna go through the marking scheme as we go i thought maybe i would mark them all first and then put them in order after but some people are gonna do the math and figure it out so i'm just gonna go in order and you're gonna see as i go the grade just increase with each game on what i give it because i love this series so much it's gonna get graded so it's gonna be out of 50 points there's gonna be five categories we're marking each worth 10 points Three of them revolve around the campaign, one revolves around multiplayer, and one is in between. Um, and I feel like campaign should weigh more because I play Halo for the campaign. Remember guys that your opinion can be entirely different than mine. So 10 points are going to go for the game's story, 10 points is going to go into atmosphere, 10 points will go into sound, 10 points will go into gameplay, and lastly 10 points will go into the multiplayer. So. Let's say a game gets 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, they're going to get 50 out of 50, and they're going to get 100%. We're going to go by Canadian style grades, so it's just going to be percentage grades, we're not doing letters. So if they got 100, they'd get, you know, 50 out of 50, they'd get 100%. So we're going to do that, and we're just going to be going upwards. So, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I thought about just showing you all the games, giving my rankings, and then going back and putting them in order, but people could figure out what was number one pretty easily. So we are going to go, and each time a game comes up, it's going to get a higher grade as you can go, but I'm going to go through each of the five steps going down and rationalize why I gave it what I gave it, and I think this will make it much more clear why I view these games how I do. So without further ado, we're going to start, and remember guys, just my opinion, feel free to leave yours in the comment below, and uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay guys, we're coming in last place, uh, probably is pretty obvious to most of you. It is Halo Spartan Strike, the game that was a mobile game and it was brought to PC. I don't know if this one was released on PC, I know the other one, uh, uh, Assault was mobile first and came to PC. But I have the sequel lower than uh, Assault, I'm going to be pretty quick on both of these. Uh, I'm going to cover them separately though. Uh, I have it lower than the original because... It feels really lazy. There's no consequences to your action. Like story, first of all, story gets a three. Okay, there's because the story's not even happening. It's something that happened. You are playing a, a simulation of what has already happened. So there's no consequences. There's nothing like that. There's no reason for you to care at all. Atmosphere, the music, and what's going on. It's all Promethean stuff, and I find it pretty lazy. It's like what Spawn Ops did. Um, there's not much atmosphere there at all. And so it's gonna get um, it's gonna get a 3.5, and the sound is also going to get a 3.5 because that kind of goes into the atmosphere. They don't really help each other. Um, gameplay, it's gonna get a 4.5 because at least they tried to do something. You know, like I think it's pretty fun. It's something you can do for a few hours, but then you're bored. It is worse than the original one though. The Prometheans are way too grindy to fight. It's just truly not fun at all, and the story is non-existent. We already covered that. So gameplay is 4.5. Multiplayer is a zero. A flat out zero. This was heavily criticized on release. It doesn't have multiplayer. I'm gonna say that again. It doesn't have multiplayer. Alright, so this this game, even in my ranking, has just flopped on all regards, and it flopped in real life too. I'm not gonna cover it anymore. You know why, I just said it all. No multiplayer. Terrible story. Let's just continue.
Coming in at number 10 is Halo Spartan Assault. There's a drastic increase of 30% in the grade, just from last place to second last place. Um, I thought Halo Spartan Assault was actually really fun. I have a lot more hours in it than I do Spartan Strike. Spartan Strike, I beat it to beat it, I put it down. Uh, Spartan Assault has a lot of cool big battles going on in the background. It makes you feel like you're actually in a big battle. I think it is also still a simulation, but the story is a lot more there, you know? It's about the Covenant still attacking in the final bits of the war, like, while the Covenant lost, there's still groups of them were, that were still trying to push against humanity in different parts of the universe, and you get to see the final, like, remnant forces of the Covenant being defeated. Like, they all just didn't stop because Truth died. Some of them still kept trying to go. Um, it tells a heartwarming story of Spartan Davis' death. He got to die in the last, uh, the last days and months of fighting the Covenant. Um, there's some good stuff, and because there's no Prometheans in there, it's a lot of fun. So story gets a 6.5, easily. Atmosphere gets a 6.5. It's got it's got a bit of that Halo feel. It's definitely really low in atmosphere compared to the rest of Halo games, but it, it feels like there's something there. Like, there's a good, dark atmosphere there. Um, so the sound is a 7. The music's good. It's not Halo quality. 7's just like a good sound ranking for any game. Um, gameplay 6.5, pretty fun. I can go on it and just play it and enjoy myself. It's really repetitive, but it's better than uh, Strike because the Prometheans are so grindy and they can just spawn anywhere. It just sucks. This is compared to, I think if Strike wasn't out, this would be lower, but compared to Strike, it's so much funner. Uh, multiplayer is a three. There's one co-op mode where you fight Flood. There's like a handful of different maps. I played it a few times with a friend. No one's online in the multiplayer, so can't really rank it too high. It's going to get a 3. It's get points, though, because it has a multiplayer at least. So it gets a total grade. I didn't say this for the first one. My bad. Um, it gets a total grade of 29.5 out of 50, which is a 59%. I just wanted to not talk about Strike, so I got right off that. 59%. It's a passing grade. Strike did not even get that. So there we go. There's number 10. Coming in at number 9 is the infamous Halo 5. Now this is crapped on to be the worst Halo game of all time, but clearly looking at the mobile games, come on guys, we gotta give it credit for beating the mobile games. Okay, so let's just go through it. Halo 5 does amazing in one area of the game, and just shits its pants in the other end of the game. So, story. A 4 out of 10. They take Halo 4 and said, oh, you, you, you guys like the story? Really cool, huh? Yeah, throw it out the window. It, don't, it doesn't matter, all right? They ruin characters. They do so much wrong with it. Um, atmosphere. This is going to kind of go in a bit with the sound. It doesn't sound like there's no memorable songs from Halo 5. Like, some people go, oh, there is? There isn't. I, like, I, that's one of my big complaints of the game. Fun fact, it's the only Halo game I have sold. I don't own Halo 5 anymore. So I'm just probably going to use the trailer footage or something. Um, I sold it in 2016 because I was that upset with the campaign portion. Um, so, Atmosphere 5 out of 10, it doesn't really have a cool atmosphere. The cutscenes are very janky, they end quickly. Um, sound 6, you know, it's, it's music, it doesn't sound like Halo. Um, but here's where they did really good. Gameplay, 8.5. Hey, love it or hate it, this is the best fast movement game there is. Campaign, multiplayer, it's very smooth, very fun, infection is incredible. So that's going to go into multiplayer as well. Multiplayer gets a 9. One of the best multiplayers there is, which is a real shame that they mastered the multiplayer, but the campaign is so atrocious that I just didn't want to keep the game on my, on my persons. So, nailed one section, and because they flop so hard in the other section, they end so low. If they had a decent campaign, Hill of would actually be really good on my rankings. Um, so the grade overall is a 32.5 out of 50, which comes up to 65%. Um, Alright, you know, it's up it's up um seven percent oh sorry, six percent from the strike, which is a mobile game. Uh, sorry, assault. I'm getting all my games mixed up. So, you know, it, it's okay. It's definitely a letdown. I would love to see Hill Five multiplayer come up again in Infinite. I'm completely okay with that. They just really need to fix the story. Either way, ninth place. Yeah, it's the worst for like the budget it had for compared to all the other games. The mo beating the mobile games isn't that impressive, but there you go, ninth place. P 
People are going to be really upset with me for this one, but coming in at 8th place is Halo Wars 1. People cherish this game. It's not bad, you see me, like, I liked Halo 5 somewhat. Um, and Halo 2 is above it, so, I mean, Halo, sorry, Halo Wars 1 is above it. Of course Halo 2 is above it. Halo Wars 1 is above it, like, I enjoyed it, but my whole thing is the RTS isn't for me. So, if someone put this on number 1, I wouldn't blame them. The story is an 8. Really solid story, it's, uh, it takes, it's actually the earliest chronology chronologically, sorry, that word's hard to say sometimes, uh, in the Halo games. It's like the game that takes place first, so you have to play them in order. You'd touch Halo 1, Halo Wars 1 first, sorry. Um, it's really good. Um, it's the first encountered with the Flood. I like how it's the Spirit of Fire actually encounters the Flood, but isn't able to get back to humanity to inform them. Um, Forge kills himself, trying to save everyone else so they can get off. They blow up the Flood that they know of. Really good story. Uh, really likable characters. Music and atmosphere, both incredible. 7.5 and a 7. Um, it feels like a Halo game. It feels like a Halo RTS game, which is what they're going for. I don't want to feel like, say like it feels like Halo every time, but like at the point we're at in the list, this is what is basically going to get them points because they're kind of lower. Um, so I don't blame anyone for having it higher. Gameplay 7.5. That's just me being generous because I don't like RTS. I would have it lower like 6. I mean, it shows in the Halo War game franchise sales. They're lower than main games. Um, it's just not my thing. Um, so that can easily be higher for you. Multiplayer 7.5. By the time I was playing Halo Wars 1, it was already kind of dead. Didn't really get to play much of it, but I did enjoy the few games I did do with the friends. Not too much to say here. I'm going to give it a 37.5 out of 50. 75%. Definitely not embarrassed for it to be in the franchise. Um, I love the story of it. I think the story is its greatest aspect. Those cutscenes are really cool looking as well. Um, it's just not my genre. But I'm going to rank it a good ranking because it is a good story it is it does have great elements and i know rts wise people who are into big rts's do say it's actually very uh, minimal because it was made for the consoles you actually can't do as much as like any other rts game so that also will weigh in like a professional would actually not rank this as high as other rts games either rts just isn't my thing so you can give or take my review on this one here uh it's i enjoyed it but yeah that's all i can say for it Okay, we're at the the baby of the franchise, the foundation for what laid it all. People, this is what really actually started me to make this list. As I've seen people like uh, the Act Man gave it the best campaign and all that. Uh, people give it like 10 out of 10 story, 10 out of 10 this and that. People say it's not dated. I'm sorry guys, I started with Halo 2, so I have no nostalgia for Halo C. It doesn't hold up that well. It's very repetitive. I only play through it again. Like I like to do uh, Halo 1 to 4, including Reach. I go through them all just for fun every now and then, like that's how much I love the campaigns. Halo C is one of those games where I'm like, I enjoy it, but I want to get through it to get to Halo 2. Um, it's 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 alright, uh, let's just go through it. Story-wise, it's a 7.5, it's not a 10, people. Um, if, if you think it's a 10, that's completely fine, once again, this is just my opinion. It's just not a 10, it's so basic, the cutscene, they're so janky. Like, if the anniversary at least made the movements look more natural, I could be a bit more immersed into the story, but the, everyone, everyone can agree on this, anniversary did a crap job. Um, so, I can't give it any higher than 7.5, I, there's no big moments in there besides Keys dying, it's not even emotional when something happens because the animations are so janky. Uh, it built the foundation for the universe, um, not really, uh, kind of the Halo Reach book did, that came before it, Halo the Fall of Reach. I read the books, so I kind of give that the credit, because that did come out beforehand, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's very solid. Okay, let's just go through it. I'm sure 8.5. It, it's part of the, the trilogy, so it has some of the best atmosphere. It lays the foundation for the rest of the games. Music, Marty O'Donnell go, went ham on this. He went cray-cray, all right? He, he gets a 9 out of 10 on this. Some of the most amazing tracks are on this one. The only reason why it's only a 9, I would give it a 10, because over other franchises, it gets a 10. But the, the later games in the uh, the Halo franchise kind of took these songs and said, and Marty went like, I'm going to make these better. So I got to lower it just because there's just better songs in the later games, which were built upon Halo CE. Uh, gameplay is an 8. It, guys, it's very repetitive. This I'm kind of being generous with an 8. I think this the worst fault of it. It should be a 7. Um, it's very repetitive. It's really fun, but like... I, I think the multiplayer is just as fun as the campaign, like, you just go on, you play it for, like, a few games, and you kind of leave. Halo MCC, I kind of just play multiplayer because it gives the best medals. I give it a 6 out of 10. 
Uh, even just how it loads up and there's no like animation or talking. Like, you think they could have added that for MCC. It feels very dated. It feels like when I'm loading in, it's going to be... Bo it feels... It's hard to explain. It feels boring loading in, but once you're in the game, it's fun. But yeah, like it didn't even have true multiplayer at the start, which is just because it's an old game. But like, I'm not going to... I have, I'm holding it to today's standards, all right? So that's how my rankings go. I'm not going to go, oh, well, if I played it back then, I would like it. No, it's... Eh, it's six. It gets a six. It's a great 3950, slightly above the last ranking. It's going to get a 78%. Very solid ranking, guys. I don't want anyone to be upset at me here. People are probably going to be raging because it's, it's behind 343 games. But it's it doesn't do anything for me. I started with Halo 2. And I, I, so I can just fully recognize its faults. I'm not blinded by nostalgia at all. It does not hold up. Some of my friends where I've gone through and said, hey, let's play all the Halo games together. Yeah, they, they agree. It doesn't feel that fun to play for new Halo players. The atmosphere is cool, but it's not fun to play. So um, I'm going to lower it a bit. And there you go. It's coming in at number uh, seven. Let's just keep going. I don't want to... <laughs> I had to defend myself a lot on this one. I don't want to keep talking about it. <laughs> Coming in at number 6 is a 343 game, um, Halo 4. Some people have this really low because the story doesn't work for them and that's completely fine by me. Um, some people don't like how Master Chief becomes more humane and they try to bring more of a character out of him. Um, my example to that is a very niche example which a lot of people won't understand. Uh, the FE9, Fire Emblem 9, Path of Radiance, Black Knight. He's a main villain, he gets actually like no character development in that game. He comes back in the game after that FE10. Uh, Radiant Dawn, and they make him like a really good character with like, you know, rationale and stuff, and he talks and emotion. And some people really don't like it. It's like, what? But then some of people like me really love it because they give him more character. He's a badass character and they make him better. That's how I see Halo 4. They make Master Chief an even better, more memorable character. Actually, Halo 4 matches what Master Chief is like in the books. It's more similar to the books than any of the Bungie games. All right, because Bungie didn't like the books. They didn't like what was going on in there. Um, so story, I have to give it a 10. It's my personal favorite story in all the Halo games. I That's the only Halo game where I've teared up. Johnson dying and all that. You know, it's like, oh, damn. I, even as a kid, I didn't cry. You know, but like the Cortana stuff at the end, that hurts. So um, atmosphere gets an 8. This is the one through for the game where I feel like they were on the right track. And then they fell off after this. Like, it wasn't perfect, but they were on the right track with the, the atmosphere, how the game's world feels, and the music of it is too. It's like more of a choir chanting. Um, I, I, I liked both of those. Gameplay gets an 8. It's a very generous 8, just because I had to do a lot of lasso and stuff, and I kind of like the gameplay a bit more because of that. But uh, I do have to admit, it's pr pretty, it's pretty uh, average. It's nothing exciting. The multiplayer I gave a generous 6 because of MCC. If I just didn't count MCC and just counted uh, the original Halo 4. Um, and by the way, all the MCC rankings did go for CE as well. I just don't like CE too much. Um, it's better in MCC, but the original multiplayer completely died for Halo 4. Like It's it's only a 6 out of 10 because it's fun to play, but it it doesn't keep you playing it. It's like CE for my in my opinion. Um, you just kind of play it a few times and then you kind of leave. But yeah, that's all I can really say about it. Um, it gets a 40 to 50, it gets an 80%. It's a great game. It's fantastic. I wish 343 3 stayed on the ball with this one and kept going and just had Halo 5 multiplayer and a Halo 4 campaign for Halo 5. If they had the campaign that was level of Halo 4, it'd be in my top four or maybe three games. But uh, they didn't. Halo 4, amazing story. They actually nailed that end of it. So they get a good marking because they nailed the end that has you know more points to grab. But the multiplayer does lower them down a bit. So uh, that's it. That's where Halo 4 comes in. We are in the top 5 now. So it's going to be Halo 3 ODST. A lot of people have this at the top. So once again, like now we're in the top 5, it's going to get really controversial. Because people, everyone has these games at different levels. Because the Halo games are all pretty unique from each other. For me, ODST um, has actually gone up like 3 or 4 ranks uh, over the past year with the MCC release. I used to not like Hail 3 ODST. When I played it when I was a kid, I played it once and dropped it. I like it now. After we play it on MCC, I, I literally went through our normal to replay it because I didn't remember it. Um, so Hail 3 ODST, I gave this story an 8 out of 10. It's not, my big problem with it is they try to make it come back to Halo 3, be like, oh, this was needed to happen. But what happens in that story doesn't actually affect 
what really happens in Halo 3. It's like, oh, we need to figure out what they're digging for. They don't really figure out what they're digging for, even in Halo 3. So it's like, what was the whole point of ODST if Johnson asked Engineer and they still couldn't figure out what they're after? It it just it doesn't matter in the long run. I, I love the little story to it. Like, it feels like not world ending for once, just a small squad doing what they have to do. I love it. So let's get into the big stuff. Atmosphere. Come on, guys. It's a 10. It's the best atmosphere um, a Halo game has ever had. Um, people literally will just sit in the room after a breakup and put on the Halo ODST soundtrack and just cry to the jazz going on. It's amazing. Um, sound, same thing. That just helps the atmosphere. They really connect and correlate with one another. Um, gameplay is a 9. It's just Halo 3, but you got a cool little uh, silence pistol. Um, you don't have shields either. You have health. I think that's fine. It goes back to Halo CE a bit more and a bit more like Reach. Um, gets a solid 9. Can't complain about it. It's, it's just Halo 3. It's good. Um, multiplayer. Multiplayer is going to get a 4. So I was looking at the wrong ranking there. But it's they're all good so far. Uh, multiplayer is going to get a 4. Because uh, there's like no multiplayer. You got Firefight on MCC. And you got Co-op Campaign. I can't give it a passing grade for not having its own arenas and stuff. I mean, it was basically just a DLC that got bigger, so they made its own game. You can't really fault it for that, but it is going to go down in the multiplayer section. Even with the, a really bad multiplayer score, it gets, it's going to get 49, four, sorry, 41 out of 50 for an 82%, which is an amazing grade, nothing to, to mock at. So it comes at number 5, really good placing for it, especially since I did not like it as a kid. I feel like this should show how good Halo Wars 2 is, because I was talking about with Halo Wars 1 how RTS isn't my thing. Halo Wars 2 does an amazing job just one-upping the original in almost every section. The DLC is amazing for this one as well. Like, this is the one time where, like, a game really has DLC where I'm like, it's kind of worth it. Um, so the story I'm gonna give a 9. I think it's better than the original Halo Wars story. Uh, the introduction of the Banished into the video games is really interesting. Aatrox is actually a really good uh, villain. It's one of 343's best villains. They did have, um, his, his name's escaping right now, but the leader of the Storm Faction, Drill Madama, sorry. I really liked him as well, but they kind of screwed him up in Halo 5. Uh, Aatrox has an amazing beginning with Halo Wars 2. Um, and yeah, it honestly, it's story is its brightest point. Atmosphere. 8.5, 343 kind of, this was like the game where like after Halo 5, everyone thought, oh my god, 343 has to redeem themselves. And they, you could see steps of them bringing in the right direction. Same with the uh, sound, 8.5, the music. It just felt so good again. Like their music could make scenes, could make the story. Like that's Halo music. Uh, gameplay, it's an 8. It's a step up from Halo Wars 1. Same RTS stuff, more uh, units, it's smoother gameplay. Blitz mode and multiplayer are really fun, so I'm going to give multiplayer an 8 as well. It's a lot more active. Blitz mode was insanely fun. I played that the entire time. Um, the only reason why it's down is just because it's RTS, and it actually is very minimal. I have played other RTSs. It is very minimal um, in what you can do. So overall grade is a 42 to 50 and 84%. Another amazingly solid game. I didn't think Halo Wars 2 would get this high in my ranking, but here it is, and I think it deserves it. Honestly, it, it's an amazing RTS game. And I don't know if they're going to do a Halo Wars 3 because the sales weren't amazing because this is how RTS games are. I hope they do. A lot of people hope they do, but that it's up to them completely. So yeah, number four, Halo Wars 2. Okay, guys, top three. Number three is a lot of people's, once again, uh, top game. Uh, Halo 2. So... Halo 2 nails a lot of aspects, it just loses small amounts of points everywhere, tranquil throughout, which is what makes it drop below number 2 and number 1. So let's just get into the... everyone knows how amazing Halo 2 is, let's just get into it. Story 10. It You get to see the Covenant's point of view for the first time in the series. It's very political. I think any game that's political uh, definitely shines. You can see that once again in Fire Emblem games and the Tele series. It nails politics the best and that's what makes the universe so... Um, deep, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Interesting. Um, I really love the redemption story of the Arbiter. Even though he killed billions of humans, you're able to feel bad for him, and you're able to see him come to the hero side. Um, the Flood is upped in this game, and their uh, contribution to the story. There's some really good terminals in MCC as well. 
Um, atmosphere at 9, the flood levels are insane, especially in the remaster. You, like, you see how scary this threat is. Um, sound 9.5, just upgraded tracks from Halo CE. Uh, some, a lot of really cool new ones, but a lot of them are just really upgraded tracks. This is some of the peak Halo music you can get. Um, gameplay is an 8. It loses 2 points, basically because it's not balanced at all. Um, I, I only go through on Legendary, and Legendary, you've done like 2 or 3 shots. So basically what happened was, I, I, it, I could get the wrong way here, but I think it was too easy, and they had a lot of enemies still. So they upped the difficulty, but they didn't have time to balance it, so they just went, okay, uh, it's way too easy, and we have a lot of enemies. Quickly, before we re release this game, just up how much damage they do. We don't have time to test it, go. And they upped it too much, so you die really quick, and there's so many enemies. And not to mention, it's RNG where the enemies come from in a lot of the missions. It's just a mess. It's just a complete mess. Uh, so that's what makes it lose points. If they nailed the, the gameplay better, it would definitely be one or two. But yeah, it loses two points there. Um... In the multiplayer, I'm going to give a 9. Um, it's really good. Customization's not really there at the point in time. MCC makes it a little better. Um, the wielding's cool. I definitely see why it broke the weapon triangle. So, that's one big thing there. Bungie even talks about that. They feel like it, it interrupted the, the weapon. The, beauty, the golden triangle, I think it's called. Um, dual wielding, so that's why they didn't really like to bring it back. Um, but I can't really complain here. Everything's just really solid. Not my favorite Halo. It's a g game I started with. So you're like, I'm not true biased. It's the game I started with. It's number three. Like, it gets bested pretty easily just because it has a lot of faults. But yeah, no, third place is Halo 2. Okay, guys, number two. This game has a cult following, and I, I can't blame them why. I'm just going to quickly go through these. You guys should know why this is number two. The other, number one is number one. Um, so story, 9 out of 10. Uh, Noble Squad, I love their story of, um, you know, you get to see Spartans be like the superhuman beings throughout the entire franchise. But by the time you get to Halo Reach, you see them dropping like flies. Like that was like where all the Spartans started to just die out of nowhere. Like Gamma Company from the books just gets absolutely slaughtered. They lose like 150 Spartans. Um, it's insane stuff. I'm thinking of Gamma Company from a battle uh, before Reach, sorry. But yeah, it's the same stuff. Like, Spartans just get obliterated on that. It's like the Gamma Company thing. Spartans just get obliterated left and right. Uh, Noble Team, I love how your character sacrifices himself at the end. He's hyper-lethal, the same ranking of Master Chief. I think it was a great ending to the trilogy. It was, um... It was a love letter to the fans. And there's... It's nothing more to say. It gets a 9. Atmosphere and sound. You feel like you're about to die. You feel like you're fighting a hopeless battle. They nail that. You, there's nothing more to say. It gets a 10. Uh, sound, the music, once again, it's some peak Halo music. Like, Marty O'Donnell went, yo, this is a love letter, I'm going crazy on this last game. And the action fights are just made better because of the music, the sad scenes are made better because of the music. I can hear Halo Reach music and go, hey, that's Halo Reach, which I can't really say for Halo 4 and 5. Halo 4 I might be able to tell because the choir is so different. But yeah, it really stands out. Um, gameplay 8.5. Um, it loses a mark and a half because armor abilities aren't the greatest thing. They're not entirely balanced. Ha ha ha. Um, what's the armor ability everyone makes fun of? Armor lock. Armor lock. Ha ha. Armor lock. <laughs> armor lock. Gee, I, my, uh, pronunciation's not the best. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, a lot of memes were made from that. A lot of memes were made from that again when MCC released. Not the most balanced. But multiplayer gets a 10. The best customization in the series. Um, Halo Infinite's even going to be following what Halo Reach did. It was that good. So there's not much more to say there. Best customization in the series. Some of the best game modes. Forge. Can't, can't not talk about Forge. Um, honestly, every Halo game from the past and future should look to be Halo Reach. So that's coming in at number two. Exactly sure what will happen when we fire it. We'll head for the portal. Then we'll all go home. Okay, guys, and coming at number one is Halo 3. 
So let's just quickly go through this and get it out of the way right off the bat. I mean, I think a lot of you could see this coming. So first of all, story gets a 10. This is, well, like there's little flaws in the story here and there, like how the flood gets defeated. It's not too realistic. Um, it's the perfect ground off for the trilogy. And this is going to go quickly right into number two. I mean, there's just some cheesy lines like, like Miranda, but that's, you know, that's like the only fault it gets. Um, number two, atmosphere. Some of the music that plays during cutscenes makes the cutscene seem more important than any other game in the franchise. I think that should be really taken into account. It makes you feel like, hey, this is the end. This is a lot of stuff going on. Three sound kind of goes in with that. It's, this is my favorite track of songs. This is the best of CE, the best of two. And I reached came after, so I can't really say that. But like, it has the songs just perfected. That's also just going to get a 10. All three of those get a 10 so far. And then gameplay is going to get a 9. Very solid. Honestly, I think this is where they also mastered again, as proven by the Halo 3 multiplayer and how popular it was. The only reason why it's only a 9 is because it feels a little weird going from any other Halo game to 3. Like, Reach to 3, 2 to 3. It feels like, whoa, I'm slow. I don't know how to describe it. Like, even from 2 to 3, it just doesn't feel right. But that's it. It's just because the adjusting period, it feels really off. And multiplayer, lastly, I didn't really get a true chance to play multiplayer during its prime, but I have had a lot of chances on uh, MCC. It gets a 9 out of 10. The only reason why it's not a 10 is because a lot of the SWAT games and all that, you have to lead your bullets. I don't know if that's just the problem with MCC, but it's really annoying where you have to shoot where someone's going to be and not where they are. It's the only really frustrating thing. But other than that, I'm that's basically it. Halo 3 is almost perfect in my books. Um, it's the second Halo game I've played. So I, I maybe have, I'm a bit biased, but I don't have any bias towards Halo 2. Like, I will crap on Halo 2 in a lot of discussions. It is ranked high, though, but I will crap on Halo 2 a lot, even though it's number 3. But yeah, guys, that is it. Um, You're allowed to put your own list in the, in the comments or tell me how wrong mine is. I'm not going to have a separated outro for this. Like, I'm just going to finish it off as my number one listing here. I'm going to say thank you guys for tuning in. I don't know what my next list is going to be. Um, I have some crazy ideas for lists, but they would take a really long time. So I don't know. This one was on the like on the fly, like on the spot. So I don't know if um, you know what's gonna pop up. It could be another on the fly or another long project that I've been thinking of. If you guys have any ideas for lists? Uh, leave them in the comments below. And thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it.